There's a new update for Topaz Photo AI version 3.0, and today we're going to get a first look at it. It now has presets. This product's getting better and better. Let's check it out. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. There's a lot of exciting new features here inside of Topaz Photo AI version 3.0. A lot of interface changes. We can do a lot of cool things here. Well, let me just show you. Now, if we look to the right of the screen and we see our panel here, you notice right up here in the top right-hand corner, if you click this button, you can collapse the sidebar to give you a lot more real estate to view your image, which I think is really kind of nice. I really like this. You can open it back up by clicking this button again. Now, something else that's new for raw files, and I have raw files in here right now, if you click on add enhancements, you can now add like adjust lighting enhancements to your raw files. Now there's one little thing about that though. When you export your image, it will be a TIFF file, not a DNG file. So that may be an issue for some of you. I don't know. I don't really use the lighting adjustments in Photo AI, but they are there now for raw as well as balance color. You can balance color on raw files now too. You could save them as a DNG file, but the color enhancements will not save the DNG output correctly. So don't do that. If you're not using adjust lighting or balance color on your raw files, you don't have to worry. They will save out as raw files. Now, one note about adjust lighting, it defaults at this number of eight. And I always find that's usually too strong so usually you'll have to pull that back a little bit and adjust it to your taste. On the previous version, I believe that number was 25. Now it's eight. I'm pretty sure it has changed. So they've changed something here with adjust lighting, but maybe that's just for raw files. I don't know. Now here's another change. And a lot of you are going to be happy about this one. You can now reorder the way these enhancements are stacked up here. For instance, Right now, adjust lighting is under sharpen. I can click and drag this up above sharpen so you can move your arrangements of all your different enhancements. So I think that's going to be a nice improvement. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, whenever you're doing a raw file, you're always going to have denoise at the top of the stack here. So you can't move it. Any of the other enhancements you can, but you can't remove raw denoise because it always processes the denoising first and now next up something we've all been waiting for especially those of you out there who like to batch process a bunch of raw files and that is we can save presets now see right here where it says save as preset so if i click save as preset you'll notice it says preset it has adjust lighting and sharpen in it and you could go ahead in this field and type in a name and then go ahead and click save and it saves it as a preset. I'm going to X out of here for now. One thing you can't save in a preset is raw denoise because that always gets added to raw files no matter what. You can't even remove a raw noise preset. Now any of these other presets, for instance, I don't really want adjust lighting so I can click the X and remove that enhancement, but you can't get rid of the raw denoise. I'm going to go ahead and click on sharpen to open this up so you can see the controls here. Whenever you save out a preset, whatever adjustments you have here or whatever AI models you are using will get saved as the preset as well as selection. Whatever selections you choose, that all gets saved as a part of your preset. Now, where do those presets go? Well, let me show you. If you come up here and click on Add Enhancement, you'll notice your presets will live up at the top. And you can see I have some presets here. I have one for Denoise, the background sharpen subject separately. Another one for Denoise, the sky sharpen landscape only. One for sharpen for lens blur, one for sharpen for motion blur. But come up with some presets things that will really help you in your workflow. And this is great for batch processing if you want to apply that same preset to a whole bunch of raw files. Presets will really help speed up our workflows and I'm excited about them. Also, the UI, the user interface has had a whole new refresh. So now all of the products like Gigapixel, Video AI, as well as Photo AI are all going to carry on a similar look, which I think is really good. Here's something else that's new. For instance, whenever you click on an enhancement, the panel opens up so you can make adjustments and it is docked and you could drag it away from there. 
like this, you see, move it anywhere you want. And then if I click X and close it and then open up sharpen, it's going to be sitting right over there. So that's pretty cool, right? Or you could take it and drag it over to the dock. And when you get to the edge there, you see that blue line there, that means it's going to dock and now it'll stay docked there. And now when you either click the X or click on the name of the panel, it will close. Now that also holds true if you have a panel over here or anywhere on the screen you want to keep it, it'll stay there, right? You could click the X again to close it or for instance, I could come over here and click on sharpen and close it. And now click on raw denoise, open it back up and it stays right there. Click raw denoise again and it goes away. Or again, we could bring it over and dock it, which I like and click here and that closes that control panel. Here's the way I like to work with this new update. Collapse the sidebar by clicking this button. And then if you want the raw denoise, click this button. Now you still have all that real estate or I could click on the sharpen icon and now my sharpening controls come up here. Or if you want to add an enhancement, just click right here to add an enhancement. All pretty nice. And that's the way I like to work it keeping this sidebar closed. And now we still have all the different ways of viewing our image. For instance, we can click this button to show the original. Click it again to see the Photo AI updated version. This just goes back to the full screen. Then we have the side-by-side -side view if you click this button here. And whenever you drag this side, this side moves accordingly. On the left is the non-processed, on the right is the processed. But look how sharp that is. It's amazing. I, this product is doing a fantastic job, in my opinion. And then, of course, you have the split screen here. So we can split this screen and then drag this across. This is before and then this is after. Let me go ahead and zoom in to like 200% so we can really, really see this. What kind of a job it's done. So check it out. There is the before. You can see the noise in there and how unsharp this is. But now look at that. It does such a fantastic job. I'm going to go ahead and click this button to go back to the normal view. And now let me change this to a different image. Let me click on this image. Right now you're seeing the autopilot settings, but let me left click. Here's another way you can see before and after. Left click and hold with your mouse. There is the before and here is the after. But isn't that beautiful? It does such a great job. Now let me say a word about batch processing. I have my photo AI set up by default to apply autopilot settings. Now, right now, I don't even have to click on these images. All I need to do is come over down here and click export five images and then autopilot will be added to all of these images. And if you're satisfied with that, that's all you have to do. So it's really fast. But let's say, for instance, I want a little bit more sharpening. So I come up and click on my sharpen button and let's say I want to increase that strength or maybe change my AI model, but maybe let's say I just want to increase my strength a little bit. And let's say I want to apply the settings from this image to all of the images. Now what you need to do is see where it says select all, make sure you have that checked on. And then you could either come up here to edit and come and click apply current settings to select it or you could right click on the image and hover your mouse over apply and then click on current settings to selected images. Or you could right click on this image and do the same thing, apply current settings to selected images. For me, the easiest way is just to right click on the image. Let's say I want to do that. I'll right click on the image and apply current settings to selected images. And then this comes up. Are you sure you want to apply the currently displayed image settings to all selected images? And I do. So just click apply and that will apply them to all of the images. And this is something else that is new. If you come up and click the plus to add enhancements, you can add multiple preserved text or face recovery enhancements. So you can have more than just one text or face recovery enhancement. So that's new. One thing I'd also like to point out concerning the presets where they are stored. If you come up here to help and click on help and click open presets folder, it'll open up the folder where all your presets are saved. And if we follow the path here, they're saved under Topaz Labs, Topaz Photo AI in presets. So maybe you want to back those up. You can go ahead and copy those and then save them in another folder somewhere just in case you ever need to get them back in case something happened to 
Topaz Photo AI. So I thought I'd point that out. And that's basically it. Now I have all of these RAW files here, these five RAW files. They all have the same settings on them. I'm ready to export them. All you need to do is come over here and click on Export 5 Images. I will send these back to the original folder. They'll be saved as RAW files, as you can see over here. And then I always like to click this on this toggle, Add Applied Filters to File Name. That way I know what I've done to these images. And then just click Save. And you'll see they'll start to save. And I notice this saving process seems to go a lot quicker. It's not too bad. It's pretty fast. So give this update a try. I think you're going to be really, really happy with it. I know I'm super happy with it. And I think Topaz Photo AI is getting better and better and better. Well, there it is, everyone. This is the latest update for Topaz Photo AI version 3.0. I think it's a really great update. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, if you enjoyed today's first look video, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then... Happy editing.